Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the H96 Pro Plus. This is an Android TV box where you plug it into a monitor or a projector and transforms it into a smart experience for watching media, browsing the web, and maybe the occasional game. This is, I would say, a fairly high-end TV box at a low cost. You can find it for under 60 bucks, and it comes with three gigabytes of RAM, which is more than the average uh, one or two gigs you find on something on this price point. And it also has an octa-core ARM Logic S912 processor, which is also good enough, again, for handling multitasking, streaming media, and for the occasional game. It does come with Bluetooth version 4.1, and for Wi-Fi, we have access to 2.4G and 5.0G. The version I have here comes with 32 gigs of built-in flash storage, expandable via micro SD card or a USB thumb drive. It also supports hard drives up to 2TB, so no worries at all as far as the capacity is concerned. There's even a upgraded version with 64 gigs of built-in memory if you need more, and you can shout out a little more cash. Other specifications, now the octa-core chipset is clocked at 2 gigahertz, so again, pretty fast. And there's also access to 3D, you can view back 4K content without any problems, and uh, it does support 5.1 surround sound as well, and runs on Android 7.1 Nougat, which is very uh, up-to-date right out of the box. So the packaging here, pretty fancy, it reminds me of the HTC HD2 packaging. You have hints of gold coming in from the sides, and if we pop open the lid, there's the box on the top. So it has a boxy shape that's very traditional for something like this. And underneath, there are the accessories, which include the power adapter. There's also the remote, very standard. Now this is not an air remote, so you can't use gestures to control the cursor's position on screen. For easier navigation for links and stuff, I would recommend plugging in your own mouse so you can purchase that separately. There is a five-way D-pad though and numbers to control parts of a scene if you have it set up. And there's also an HDMI cable for connecting this to your monitor or projector. Finally, there's a user manual documenting how to set it up. Setting these things off to the side and taking a look just at the design of the H96 Plus, we can see that it is made out of plastic and remains surprisingly lightweight. I wouldn't say it's cheap feeling, but it does have a fairly futuristic look and sits nicely on a surface or a desk without taking up too much space. So taking a closer look here, we do have the company's logo embedded on the very top. It has sharp corners and it's made mainly out of plastic with no aluminum accents. The side here features the micro SD card for expanding memory. The back features all the ports, full-sized HDMI, Ethernet for wired internet connection. There's an optical port for better sound, an AV out if you don't want to use HDMI. There's the power port, and of course, there are two more full-size USB ports on the side for additional accessories and peripherals. So all in all, very clean presentation. The front is where you have the IR, IR sensor for the remote. So everything is pretty tightly integrated. Back features a few ventilation grills and rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. Let's take a closer look at the software side of things next. So here's the boot up sequence for the H96 Pro Plus. It's going to take roughly a minute to a minute and a half to completely load. So there is a bit of waiting time and then goes into the Mbox animation. The interface here has been customized uh, to give you a more optimized viewing experience just because you only have a remote for your regular navigation needs. So it's going to be laid out in tiles just like on other Android TV boxes we've seen in the past. It's pretty simple and easy to get used to. You have just oversized icons for things like YouTube, Netflix, and the Google Play Store, which have been pre-installed. And there's also access to Kodi, which you can use to stream content uh, on the web, as well as load back many Kodaks of videos from MP4, uh, you know, to, to full 4K resolution, and it's going to play it back without any problems uh, in our quick testing, which is actually quite impressive. Interface, again, very straightforward and easy to use. The remote actually seems quite sensitive. The only downside, of course, is for typing, you have to hunt and peck and scroll through words since it's not as convenient as a full QWERTY keyboard. And that's why you should use an app on your phone to connect to this using Bluetooth, or you can, of course, connect a physical keyboard. Uh, you can see it's very modern looking. There's access to a file manager, a music player. You have a folder for your games for separate apps, videos, 
standard WebKit-based browser and a list of all your applications also customized. Uh, we have access to standard utility tools and the Chrome browser is also here. Facebook has been preloaded in addition to, again, Netflix. Uh, and of course, you can see a bit more info about the settings and load up Kodi if that's what you want to do. So going back home again, everything seems pretty snappy and responsive as far as uh, some light multitasking and navigating around. On the top, there's time and date information, and I can also connect on the top here to things like my Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth status, which I can toggle on and off. Tapping on settings brings out a drawer from the right here that gives me quick shortcuts for navigating through wireless internet, scanning apps, going through language setup, stuff like that. And indeed, if we go through settings, we can get a more accurate view that indeed we are running on a full version of Android and scrolling all the way down, uh, we see that it's running on Android 7.1 Nougat, which is quite impressive. Just like on a tablet, the very bottom row of the screen is dominated for icons that go back, home, and take a screenshot. However, unless you have a built-in mouse that's connected by USB, it's a little hard to access these controls. So I wish there was an easier way to hide this bar just by using the remote alone. But that's my only con as far as the overall usability and everything feels snappy and quick. This does support mirror cast. So it becomes almost like a Google Chromecast where you can uh, mirror content over wirelessly from a laptop or from a smartphone without the need for an HDMI cable, which is actually pretty cool. So let's take a quick look at the YouTube client first. Pretty standard as far as setup, slight modifications to make it look better on a larger display, but we have access to trending, we can also slide through multiple categories, and let's try playing back a video. So this is what the on-screen keyboard looks like. Uh, you can see that it's a little bit tedious to navigate through longer words, but it works. And let's tap on one of our videos, and you can see that the interface is very clean and uh, overall it's simple to navigate and to use. The output resolution by default is at 1080p, but I can also play back 4K content without any issues. Same thing goes with 3D stereographic videos, both on YouTube and on the memory itself that you would, may want to load up. So you can see the interface here, very clean, oversized keys for changing the volume and skipping or scrubbing, uh, which is better than other TV boxes I've seen in the past where the interface was a bit more clunky. Just really easy to use with the remote all in all, and it feels like a very complete solution. You can see that the speed is also quite fast. There's very little, little loading time, and I can scrub anywhere between the video without that many issues. And that's probably because of the three gigs of RAM coupled with the octa-core two gigahertz processor. That's definitely sufficient for things like browsing the web and viewing back video content. So all in all, very impressive for enjoying some quick entertainment. You can also download any apps from the Play Store. So if you want to, you can quickly access things like Hulu, uh, Netflix, Amazon Video. All those things can be downloaded. If we take a look at the built-in browser here, again, it takes us, looks like, to Chrome directly. Just like with YouTube, browsing is swift and responsive. I can open up multiple tag tabs without the browser slowing down. Of course, you won't be doing too much, I think, browsing without having a remote uh, connected. And using a tablet or phone still remains, I think, a more convenient experience. And that's just simply because navigating around remains a little bit tedious with a remote control uh, without touch. However, it does work. And if you're giving presentations, you're reading back articles, or showing something to a friend or family member, it remains a powerful solution. So if we exit out of this and take a look at some other apps that are built on here, you can see that under games at the moment, you won't find anything, but you can add your own programs as you download them from the store, or of course, sideload them using the built-in memory. Let's examine the Kade DMC or the Kodi app built on here. You can see it's version 17.3, loads up pretty quickly for the very first time. And from here, we should be able to scrub through, find local video files, no problems at all in terms of Kodaks, in addition to online content without issues. So you can see the interface here also very optimized for navigation using the remote with an oversized time date on the top and navigation bars for things like uh, selecting by type of video. So I can select by HTTV, Vice, YouTube, NBC, TED Talks, things like that. And of course, I can choose music content and stream it as well. Program files, and of course, Android apps that are kind of recommended for media consumption are also on the bottom. 
From here, I can also cycle through photos and again, videos that are local on my device. So it's also a file manager. And of course, favorite channels and favorite types of content. There's even a weather widget, which is just really a nice addition, uh, gives you a really complete experience here. So for instance, if I really like TED Talks, I can tap on that and hopefully search for the newest Using this list, I can then tap on here. It gives me a quick description as well as an image or a thumbnail, and then it will load it back in just a few seconds. And you can see that the video quality is very impressive. It is in full 1080p, and again, scrubbing renders no issues at all. So you have access to millions of free content uh, you know, available from all types of video sources just because of this built-in app, which is really convenient and a nice bonus. And again, the interface is complete and cohesive. Gaming, no problems either. It supports, again, any games from the Play Store. And since it does have three gigs of RAM and an octa-core chipset, it remains pretty swift and responsive. Things like Tank Hero run perfectly. However, I would recommend connecting to a Bluetooth controller, like an iPega remote control, just because gaming in an analog style feels more natural than using something like a remote here, which is not as easy to use. So overall, I have to say the H96 Plus is one of the most powerful Android TV boxes that I've reviewed uh, in the past three years. Of course, we expect technology and silicon chips to become faster and faster. Uh, but what I'm really impressed here is by the interface, how complete everything feels and how optimized it is to run on something with only a remote. So the grid icons and the simple navigation make everything just that much better. Uh, video streaming, no problems at all, very quick and fast, supported all the 3D and 4K content I threw at it and Kodak's without any problems at all. Very complete set of software. Of course, you can expand by yourself as well. So if you're looking for a relatively uh, low cost Android TV box at uh, you know affordable price, but also delivers in terms of performance, this is definitely one of the best options here in 2017. So you can check out more details in our review coming out soon. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS.